Finally, I have the ASUS GTX 1070 ROG Strix graphics card on hand for review. Since I'm a bit late to the party with this one, I thought I'd do something a little different. Rather than just create another 1070 review video, why not compare the Strix with one of the most popular GTX 1070 cards I've reviewed to date, the Gigabyte GTX 1070 Extreme Gaming. Both the Extreme Gaming and the ROG Strix are the biggest, baddest, air-cooled GTX 1070s each company makes, so which is the best? In an effort to try and answer that question, I'll be comparing their out-of-the-box performance, maximum overclock performance, thermals, power consumption and overall design. So let's get to it and compare these bad boys side by side. It really goes without saying that these are both incredibly awesome looking graphics cards. They're both predominantly black, which means they should look right at home in most builds. First off, let's discuss the dimensions and weight. The Extreme Gaming is the physically larger card, despite being slightly shorter at 289mm long versus 298mm for the Strix. The Extreme Gaming is also much heavier, around 10% heavier in fact, as it weighs 1,147g as opposed to 1,045g for the Strix card. Both graphics cards have been given a little extra height to facilitate the PCB and cooling upgrades. The Gigabyte card stands 138mm tall, while the ASUS model is slightly shorter at 134mm. The biggest difference can be found when looking at the card's girth. The Extreme Gaming is a bit of a fatty, spanning 3 slots of 56mm thick. The Strix, however, has been crunching those megahertz, keeping it nice and trim at just 40mm wide, some 29% slimmer. Both cards employ a triple fan configuration, though there are a few key differences in the implementation. If you watch my Extreme Gaming review, you'll know that Gigabyte managed to squeeze in three 100mm fans on a card that measures less than 300mm long. Using their new Windforce Stack 3X design, they achieved this by overlapping the fans, and to avoid any unwanted turbulence, they include a counter-rotating center fan. The ASUS Direct CU3 design is much more simple. There aren't any overlapping counter-rotating fans here. Instead, you'll find a basic 3-fan layout using a trio of 90mm fans. Still, it's not all bland and boring. ASUS does claim that their fans are quite special by using the company's patented triple wing blade technology. The tip of each blade features a little winglet on the underside. This is said to increase the air pressure at the edge of the fan blade and therefore maximise airflow. ASUS claims the design generates 105% static pressure over the heatsink. Of course, Gigabyte make their own groundbreaking fan blade design claims with their triangle fan edge. Gigabyte says this edge, combined with their 3D stripe curve on the fan surface, enhance the airflow by 23% over the traditional fans. Gigabyte also uses a double ball bearing structure for improved longevity and quieter operation. It'll be interesting to see how the fan designs compare in the real world. Of course, airflow is just part of the equation, you have to extract the heat first, and doing just that are two very large heat sinks. Again, the Extreme Gaming uses what looks and feels like a much larger cooler. The Gigabyte cooler weighs 791 grams, meaning the cooler makes up almost 70% of the card's total weight. This also means it weighs 20% more than the cooler found on the ASUS Strix card, which is pretty shocking. The Strix cooler weighs 658 grams, which is a little over 60% of the card's total weight. So, you're definitely getting much more metal for your money with the Extreme Gaming, which can be seen as both a positive and a negative depending on your point of view. From a positive aspect, this should mean superior cooling performance for the Gigabyte card. The negative though being this is a bigger, bulkier, heavier product which could cause unnecessary load on the motherboard for those that move their system around. Apart from the physical size difference, the design of the coolers is fairly similar. Both employ a number of heat pipes connecting to two separate series of aluminium fans. ASUS does use direct contact copper heat pipes for the base, whereas Gigabyte has gone for a separate solid copper base. Moving on to the PCB designs, we find two very high quality products. Gigabyte has gone with an extreme 10 plus 2 power phase design, while ASUS has gone with a more typical 6 plus 1 phase design. That said, ASUS uses their Super Alloy Power 2 components, and I mean, check out the logo on those chokes. They have to be good, right? Seriously though, ASUS is claiming that these new chokes are two times quieter than the previous designs, which significantly reduces the buzzing noises coming from the graphics card. Which design is better, I really have no idea, but I will be keeping an ear out for coil wine noises. Along with what appears to be the more extreme VRM design, Gigabyte has also added in an additional 6-pin PCIe power connector, while ASUS is stuck with a standard single 8-pin PCIe connector. Something interesting on the Strix card is a feature called Fan Connect. This is essentially a pair of 4-pin fan headers that allow users to connect their case fans to the graphics card, allowing them to be controlled by the GPU's temperature rather than the CPU's. Gigabyte, on the other hand, has included a pair of HDMI outputs here for VR mode. 
This provides convenient access for front mounted VR modules and this is a feature not found on the Strix card so that is a feature worth noting for those planning on using their 1070 with a VR headset. Ok so now we've taken a pretty good look at these GTX 1070s, now let's check the clock speeds before jumping into the benchmarks. The out of the box speeds see the Gigabyte model operating at slightly higher frequencies when compared to the ASUS Strix card. The Extreme Gaming is clocked at 2% higher while its GDDR5 memory operates at 28% faster. This then should give Gigabyte the advantage when comparing the stock performance. When manually overclocked, both achieved a base clock of well over 1.8GHz. The Gigabyte card managed 1844MHz while the ASUS went a bit higher at 1865MHz. Although the Strix card did achieve the higher overclock, this isn't conclusive evidence that ASUS will win every time. Sadly, it's only feasible for me to test a single card from each company. So let's get into the results. First up, we have an old favourite, Battlefield 4. Here the Extreme Gaming averaged 94 FPS, making it just a single frame faster than the Strix card, which is within the margin of error. Overclocked, ASUS does hit the lead as their Strix model outperformed the Extreme Gaming by 3 FPS. We find much the same when testing with Far Cry Primal. The Extreme Gaming is slightly faster out of the box, though with just 1 FPS in it and the same 56 FPS minimum, we can safely call this a tie. Overclocked, we find once again that the performance is much the same, this time ASUS came out on top by a single frame. Since we've established that out of the box and custom overclocked, the performance of these two graphics cards is virtually identical, Star Wars Battlefront is going to be the last game we look at. Here the ASUS Strix was 1 FPS slower out of the box and 2 FPS faster once overclocked. So again, very similar to what was seen when testing with Battlefield 4 and Far Cry Primal. These two graphics cards are again evenly matched when comparing power consumption. The Gigabyte Extreme Gaming allowed for a total system consumption of 249 watts, while the ASUS Strix card was slightly higher at 251 watts. The margin grew once overclocked, with both custom overclock graphics cards consuming slightly more power than the GTX 1080 Founders Edition. We know Gigabyte's Extreme Gaming features a much bigger, beefier cooler, so it's not hugely surprising that it ran cooler. That said, the massive cooler allowed the card to run just a single degree cooler than the ASUS Strix model. Both cards are extremely impressive here, operating at or below 60 degrees under gaming load. Overclocked, the Extreme Gaming only hit 61 degrees, while the ASUS Strix card hit 63 degrees. Again, impressive results for both products. In terms of volume, I don't have any scientific data, but both graphics cards remain very quiet even when overclocked. Right then, uh, so which one is better? Well, performance wise, they're much the same, out of the box and custom overclocked. The ASUS Strix card came out slightly ahead in the overclocking, though the numbers are likely to vary slightly from card to card. They both consume similar levels of power and even delivered similar operating temperatures. Design wise, they're both excellent and naturally, being ASUS and Gigabyte products, the build quality is certainly there. For me, the noteworthy differences come down to the physical size of the cards and ultimately the price. The Extreme Gaming is slightly shorter, though it's the width that'll be of most concern, especially if you plan on going SLI. The triple slot design of the 1070 makes it a tight fit in SLI, and the primary card does get a little starved of fresh air. The ASUS Strix card on the other hand features a dual slot design, so it's a little more accommodating when it comes to multi-GPU setups. Should SLI be of little interest, then it will really come down to which card you think looks best when comparing the designs. Of course the biggest deciding factor is the price, and right now ASUS looks to have a significant advantage here. Down under you can expect to pay $800 Aussie dollars for the Gigabyte GTX 1070 Extreme Gaming, while the ASUS GTX 1070 ROG Strix is fetching a more wallet friendly $730. Stateside, the ASUS card is selling for $460, and at the time of creating this video I couldn't locate the Extreme at a US retailer. So when it boils down to it, the ASUS GTX 1070 ROG Strix is the better value option. Had they been evenly priced, I have no idea which one I would pick, they're both really exceptional products. Which one do you guys prefer? Let me know in the comments, I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time. YouTubers like me depend on your support to continue improving the quality and content of our videos. To support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron to also get access to a heap of cool rewards and exclusive giveaways. Also, don't forget you can check prices and buy the products I looked at in this video through the Amazon links in the video description below. Thank you kindly for supporting me and the Hardware Unbox channel, it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it, and in return I'll continue to work as hard as I can to keep producing the content you enjoy.